I greet you, Lord's holy name. We'll continue our study from the book of First Samuel. I'm very much uh, grateful to God for this privilege of studying God's word along with you. And also, I'm so much uh, uh, thrilled to see your keen interest in studying God's word. I requested dear brother Shivaram Krishna from Andhra Pradesh. He's a staff of USI AP. He'll be leading us in prayer this evening. Hello, Uncle. Good evening. Good evening. Ma. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly gracious Father, thank you for this wonderful evening. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful Bible study. Lord, <clears throat> we have learned so many things. Thank you for the ministry of Uncle. We thank you for that. We worship you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the book of for Samuel. Yesterday, we have seen that uh, life of Saul, Lord. You selected and you denied him, Lord, due to his misbehavior and due to change of his priorities, Lord. That may happen to our lives also, Lord. Help us to take care of my life, uh, of our lives, Lord. We need your help. We need your support, Lord. Today, we are going to listening from 16th chapter onwards, Lord. Please help us and guide us. And also, I we, I pray for the uncle. Use him for your glory and honor. And also, I, I pray and commit each one of us to your great hands, Lord. <clears throat> please talk to, please talk to each one of us. We commit to your great hands. Jesus, mighty name, I pray and ask. Amen. Thank you, uncle. So much, uh, sure. We started uh, by looking at the historical books and the importance of history and uh, we need to learn. And it's very true that we need to learn from the positive side of historical characters. At the same time, we need to learn that we should not do the same mistake what the people did. As uh, the Ashuram prayed, Saul was a man uh, chosen by God, but very unfortunate that uh, he behaved differently. So we have to learn as he prayed. Uh, I'm just thinking that uh, both positively and also negatively, we have examples from the history. The Lord Almighty is a very powerful phrase. Our understanding of God is very, very important. Constantly, we look at that thought. We can learn many things. But our understanding of God is so crucial. It's not that how we describe him in our prayers, but the conviction I have about my God is very important. And we looked at the pray, prayer and also the praise of Anna, and we learned some precious lessons. Anna was a great role model for her prayer life and also how she prayed, praised God. When uh, there was no revelation of God's word in those days, God graciously spoke to Samuel. Even in these days, in some of the situations, maybe in church situation or in a ministerial context or in a family context, it's very unusual to have God's word. In such a situation, God can speak to you and to speak to uh, us and we can re he can reveal his heart to us. So that's my prayer for all of us as we attend this Bible study. God's revelation is so important. We looked at the Ark of Covenant. Uh, they were religious, but they are not spiritual. And when they are doing it religiously, they faced failure. And we need to be spiritual, not just religious, outwardly. Ebenezer is a word, it comes in 7th chapter, chapter 7 verse 12, and uh, we have learned that uh, in a hard situation, people could testify, thus far the Lord has helped us. Uh, maybe if your life is in smooth uh, sail and everything is fine with you, and you look back and say that, Lord, I thank you because um, you have thus far blessed us, Ebenezer, in our life, in our family. Praise God. But for some of us, it could be very tough. Remember, in this story, 
in a tough, tough situation, Samuel and others could see the mighty act of God. And there Samuel could testify Ebenezer. Yesterday, we saw the leaders within us, different types of leaders within us then that, lets us, that led us to think there is a leader within me in my life, in my family, and in my community, I need to release with the help of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the people have rejected God. That's what yesterday we saw that. That's so serious. Samuel thought that they have rejected him, but God told him, it is not you. They have rejected me. That's a sad uh, state of affair for a believer to reject God and look for alternative things. And also, uh, as uh, Sivaram prayed rightly, yesterday's the focus was selection and also the rejection of Saul. Today, we are going to look at the great story of David in the beginning of David's life. We are going to look at a smaller portion compared to tomorrow's study. Tomorrow we, are, we have to look at 11 chapters, but today we are going to have only five, five chapters. And uh, there are precious lessons from the life of David. I'm sure that uh, most of us have read and heard many, many powerful stories of David. Even in this evening, don't think that uh, we know everything about David. We need to learn from this great man of God. I still uh, remember about 40 years back uh, when I was in the Bible college, I had a privilege of going to Nagpur for some uh, reason and I got a, a big afternoon free. I didn't have anything to do. So in a relaxed uh, way, I wanted to read something. Then I thought I should read the, sto uh, the story of David, the passage completely on the life and ministry and work of David. It's amazing experience. So batch, patch by patch, we know a little bit about David. If we can sit and uh, read like that, it is really exciting to see the uh, great man, David's uh, ups and downs. And he was very human. We know that he was a failure, but uh, how God chose him and how he mingled with others. It is a very powerful story. Today, we are going to look at uh, in uh, four aspects. God and David, or God's hand on David. 16th chapter. David and Goliath. Very familiar story. And uh, we all know that. I'm sure that all of us know that. Uh, in Christian families, in childhood, they speak. Uh, I live with my grandchildren. My granddaughter is uh, five plus and my grandson is three plus. They love this story. But story, when they'll come to me, they'll ask, uh, Grandpa, uh, tell us the story. Then I'll ask him, what's the story? David Goliath. They want to start with that only. And that also, they'll be very particular that I should start from David killed a lion. They were excited, small children. They were excited a man could kill a lion. And even my grandson, three plus, he will come and say like that only, I'll have strength like lion to kill a lion. Like that only he'll start. So for him, Goliath is not a big problem. Lion is a big problem for David. And that's the way uh, people uh, talk about the story. But today, we are going to hear that passage. Keep that in mind. Look at the theological understanding of David. Look at uh, the positive attitude of David. It's not like small children. I'm going to be like David uh, with my strength to kill a lion and a person like Goliath. It's more than that. It's more than that. Then we are going to look at David and Saul. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have a big passage on David and Saul. And in the end, we are going to see a very powerful uh, chapter, David and Jonathan. It became a uh, example for others to say, David and Jonathan. My brothers and sisters, today 
we are going to look at in four perspectives. Uh, may the Lord minister to us. As I said, we are going to hear uh, the passage, very familiar passage on David and Goliath. But uh, don't be like my grandchildren, looking at uh, the greatness of David. But look at the greatness of God in this passage. I'm extremely happy that dear Rajshri, she is uh, an uh, Egypt member from Mysore. She is reading this passage for us. Praise Lord. Reading from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 49. From New Living Translation. But David persisted, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So I finally consented all right go ahead he said and may the lord be with you then saul gave david his own armor a bronze helmet and a coat of mail david put it on strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like for he had never worn such things before i can't go in these he protested to saul i'm not used to them so david took them off again he picked up five smooth stones from the a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David, that you come at me with a stick. And he cursed David by the name of his gods. Come over here. I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to Philistine, You come at, come to me with sword, spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of Lord of heaven's armies, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, 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 dear Rajasri, for that uh, wonderful reading. Before we go into the text, we need to look at this particular verse. Paul, in his first missionary journey, uh, told the story of uh, David to the people. And there he said, Acts chapter 13, verse 22, after removing Saul, God made David the king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. First of all, it is uh, uh, God who testified, not Samuel or other people. God testified. Number two, the important factor is I have found David, a man after my own heart. That is his being. The person of David is close to God's heart. Thirdly, we see that he will do everything I want him to do. The doing of David. My dear brothers and sisters, how beautiful it is. Uh, God testifying about David. And later we know that he was not a great saint. He was a sinner and terrible sinner. So it is not in the beginning itself God told, rather after falling into sin, terrible sin, God could tell about David, a man after my own heart. This evening, this is my prayer 
as we are participating in uh, the Bible study where we are talking about David, that should be our longing, each one of us. Lord, let me be a woman or a man after your own heart. Let me do everything you want me to do. Very important. It's not that I have my plans. Let me do it. No. I want to do whatever things you are going to tell me to do. My dear brothers and sisters, David was like that. And even uh, the previous Bible study, one of her uh, participants, she's doing PhD in Madurai. And she asked a good question. She's from a uh, non-Christian background. And she was telling, my brother was telling me, joking at me, saying that uh, you say that they're all holy people in Old Testament and the Bible, but we know that they're all sinners. And you also fall in sin. And then you confess and say that uh, God has blessed me. That's a, a bad side of Christians. That's the way her brother will be uh, joking at her. So she was asking. That is very, very common. People say that, David, how God can say that he is a man of my own heart? I just told her, and that's my answer. Why look at God's point of view? In God's perspective, God's love to us is, is extremely great. I may be an utter failure, but God, God's love to us is really great. People may not understand, but God loves me so much. And David's commitment was so high. That's what I wanted to highlight here. Even Shivaram, when he prayed, that's what he meant. Lord, as we look at the characters of the Old Testament, help us to have such a commitment. Help us. Understanding of God is one thing, but commitment from my uh, side also very important. It's not that in a study like this, in a church like uh, when we go to a lively church, we uh, rejoice in the fact that God is with me and I am with God. In a tough situation, when you're crossing, are you there? This morning, I was so thrilled to read one of the devotionals from Scripture Union. And there I read it. When uh, Joseph was there in jail, he was not cursing himself. He was not blaming others. Definitely, he might have been thinking of God, waiting for God's time. Lord, I know it's very painful. It's fine. He was a young man. He's supposed to be very active, but he was stuck up uh, in the jail. But he was thinking of God, rejoicing in God's presence in his life. When he got an opportunity, two years later, that man who was forgotten could tell Pharaoh that he is a young man. And two long years, he was not a bit dull or he was not uh, thinking of himself and having a self-pity. Rather, Joseph was thinking of God and waiting for God's time. And God honored him. When he came out, then he can testify like Daniel. I am not good in giving the uh, uh, interpretation of the dream, but God can do it. God can do it. My dear brothers and sisters, let your thinking of God and let your commitment to God grow day after day. Situations may be bad, but hold on to God. And the day will come. You can easily testify that God is good all the time. And uh, 16 chapter, first uh, passage in today's evening devotion, evening study. There we see that uh, it can be divided into two parts. Very easily we can divide. First 13 verses and uh, 14th verse, there's a shift. First passage, we can call it as Saul anoints David. Very clearly, uh, God told uh, Samuel, how long you're going to feel sad about uh, Samuel? Uh, sorry, Saul. Look at that. Chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord to Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as a king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. And first, first verse, God's uh, 
initiative, God's selection, and God's motivation. Everything is there. And very clear direction. You go to a place that is Bethlehem and go to a house that is Jesse's house. And there I will tell you one of the sons to be the king. And my dear brothers and sisters, in God's point of view, God will not do any mistakes. Maybe we will do mistakes. God will not do mistakes. Samuel, very human, he said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. I didn't expect uh, an answer from Samuel to God. Sam Samuel was a great man. Even before people come and uh, he can clearly mention what's going to happen. He was a real uh, prophet in terms of what's going to happen in future. And such a person, how come he can say that in case if Saul will kill me? Uh, that shows that Samuel, very human. He was not an angel. He was not a saint. He was human. He was afraid of life. And God told him how to do it. Then he went there. It is 16 kilometers. That's what commentators say. 16 kilometers away from his family. He went there. Look at that. When he went, David was not there. The king going to be anointed was not there. This evening, that's one thought forcefully I'm going to talk to you. Yesterday, I told you about uh, uh, the leader within you. Today, uh, this thought I wanted to leave with you. You were nowhere in the picture. But God's values are different. Samuel thought, like Saul, here is a boy, the eldest one, very tall and very handsome. And definitely, God might have chosen him. He was almost ready to anoint him. But God told, uh, no, don't uh, anoint him. He's not the person. And God's values are very different. God told Samuel, um, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Verse 7, verse 7 of chapter 16. Very important. You and me can do the same mistake. Looking at outwardly, and God says, the Lord does not look at things uh, people look at. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. My dear brothers and sisters, even today, that is very true of each one of us. God looks at a heart. He knows us in and through. And uh, the way in which God chose David, it reminds me of uh, 1 Corinthians 1st chapter. Paul is talking about it. A few weeks back, we were studying 1 Corinthians. We saw that. But God chose foolish things of the world, world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. How true it is in David's life. And I'm sure all of us could testify that. That uh, I'm nowhere. And God could have definitely considered other person. I think of my own personal life. Uh, we have uh, grown as four boys. And uh, my eldest brother is very good musician. And on those days with the uh, mouth organ, he plays nicely uh, Christian songs. If God would have called him to work among the young people, he would have attracted many people with his music. My second brother is... Uh, brilliant uh, in uh, sports. Even in his high school days, he represented Tamil Nadu and went to Delhi for a hockey match. He represented Tamil Nadu. Then later he became an university player and he was uh, working for uh, the sports authority of Tamil Nadu as a manager. He is brilliant. And third person is I am. My fourth brother, uh, my younger brother, he is a social type. He can easily go and mingle with people easily win friends. If God would have called him, he would have raised many, many more people. Like he could have easily shared the gospel with many people. But I'm a person, I cannot talk properly and I'm an introvert. 
and uh, i love to be with my mother every time i am such a person when i look back i am humbled i don't know why god has to choose me out of four this fellow that's a mystery even in your own life when you look uh, um your own life that's what you can say that god's choice of your life it's a mystery god could have chosen far better than us but still god is having the anointment on your life remember that then in saul's case in a secret way he did it but here we see that very clearly uh, in 12 we can read so he went sent for him and had him brought him because david was there in the field he was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features then the lord said rise and anoint him this is the one and david has come 13 so samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day on the spirit of god came powerfully upon david samuel then went to his native place rama what i want to communicate here this anointment is not secretly taking him to the separate room and then doing it in the presence of his brothers and the family he did it why do i say that because next chapter we read about the same brothers three of the brothers were there with saul and the eldest brother is there very much there very unfortunate that elder brother completely forgot that samuel came to my house and left me and anointed my youngest brother saul uh, david i feel extremely sorry for him that fellow should have been very smart thanking god praising god saying that lord one day my brother is going to be the king and uh, working towards it no he simply forgot my brother and sister i tell you that i am not worried about uh, david's brother but i am really worried about david in that situation if i am there i would have been down many of your mentors many of your senior people and even your pastor may forget the god's anointing on you they will simply uh, talk just nothing this fellow is just nothing hopeless like that they can talk that's what happen in future but i wanted to underline that point david was anointed before his brothers in the family 14th verse we see that now the spirit of the lord has departed from saul and an evil spirit from the lord tormented him that is true that uh, the spirit of the lord went away from uh, so that's not a big problem as such easy to interpret because uh, he has lost his priority as we just now we prayed he lost his focus the spirit of the lord came uh, went from saul but how come we can say that uh, the spirit from the lord tormented him an evil spirit from the lord tormented him a holy god he can send only the holy spirit how come he can uh, send evil spirit to torment him very difficult to uh, interpret but we need to understand god's word properly here the hebrew writing old testament in time hebrew writing uh, was whenever they talk about it they mean god is in control in every situation don't simply say that now the world is controlled by the evil spirit and god is somewhere there god has lost his control that's the way some people think even in new testament we hear like that that uh, uh, jesus was telling and paul was teaching the uh, lord of this year the lord of this year then we thought okay devil is the lord of this year he is controlling the earth now one day jesus will come back revelation 
and everything will be fine. No, my friends, the thing is, God is in control of every situation. He only allowed evil spirit to work for some time. That's the reason Hebrew writing says, God, uh, the spirit went from God. So that means God is in control of every situation. But when the man is falling and falling and falling, the evil spirit is controlling and controlling his life. Even in our own life, when we allow our spirit to be controlled by the evil spirit, naturally, God will allow uh, to happen more. That's the way we have to understand. Right? We know the story. Then uh, uh, people suggested, why don't we have a person who can um, make, make a musical uh, voice so that the evil spirit can be controlled. That was an excellent idea. And a young man was chosen. That is David. Here, I want to uh, highlight some of the points. See, when Samuel anointed him, he didn't look out how to take him to Jerusalem, how to make him as a king. No, what God told him, he did it. He just left it. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to be like Samuel, anoint him in the house and just leave how God is going to take him. That's a different story. God, in a mighty way, in a different way, took him to the palace. This time, not as a uh, big king, but as a small boy with a musical instrument so that he can uh, send out the evil spirit from Saul. And also, here I want to talk to you about the power of music. I don't know how much uh, we were aware of power of music. And uh, when I went to Shillong long back for my ministry's sake, that was a big eye opener for me. My brothers, uh, you and Egypt members were talking about the power of music. See, uh, we know that uh, when we have music, evil spirit will run away. And when we have nice songs, it's very comforting. Even just before this Bible study, we had some uh, songs, Hindi and Tamil songs. And it's very refreshing to hear songs like that. I'm sure that uh, uh, music and song uh, is soothing us and it's strengthening us. But evil also use the power of music. And in Shillong, they told me, rock and roll and dance and music committed to devil. They are directly, they commit their dance and music to the devil and worship the devil to bless it. And devil controls it. My God, my God, that was a very shocking news for me. Naturally, when uh, young people, children and old people, everybody was enjoying the dance and music committed to devil that has his power in their life. So keep that in mind. Your music can be positive, send away devil, or it can bring devil in our life. And Saul was so much pleased with David. That's what we read. And he accepted him and he asked his father to allow David to be with him. So anointed in the family, but accepted by the king. Don't simply say that uh, right from day one, Saul was not happy with David. No. What do you want to communicate here? When God has called you, when God is guiding you, don't simply say that every time people will reject you. The one who is going to reject you will be very happy with you. Saul, when you read this passage, you'll be surprised. Saul was so happy with uh, Sir David. But unfortunate thing is, he was not aware of the greatness of David. Okay, let's look at um, 17th chapter. The very familiar David and Goliath story comes in this 17th chapter. And uh, the Rajshri was reading the passage for us. Before that, there are threatening voice coming from this giant. He, he looks, uh, the, the description says about him, nine foot tall, my God, what a hefty man. And uh, very strong, his dress code and everything talked about a very huge person coming 
and screaming. And even the king Saul was so much afraid. That's what we read in the first passage. He was, def he was defying the ranks of Israel. That's what he says. I defy. Otherwise, I curse you all. Send me one. We will have fight. Don't you have one person who can come and fight with me? So that was a challenge Goliath has given. Yesterday, we saw a different challenge to the community. And here also, it's a community, but it's a face-to-face, one-to-one. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many Goliaths before us. It could be a person sent by devil to, it's a huge person. You are not in a position to handle him, handle her. It could be a, a challenging uh, time, a big problem, very big problem. It's huge like Goliath. You are a little boy like David standing before this huge problem. But we all know that David was looking at the biggest God, the living God behind Goliath. Uh, Goliath is huge, but our God is almighty and he's great. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many, many things we need to uh, look at from um, David's response. I just wanted to highlight uh, two important response, immediate response. Number one, he told, that's what we read right now. He told Saul, um, when I was with the field, uh, in the field with my flock, one time a lion came and another time a bear came and I could handle it and I could kill that lion and later I could kill that bear. And this man, an uns uncircumcised man, he is like one among them. Look at that. Here, I wanted to tell you about the secret victories of David. It's something like no newspaper headlines or nothing of that sort. Talking much about David. Oh, great. A young boy to save his uh, sheep. He killed a lion. Nobody thought, uh, talked about it. Maybe his uh, family members might have heard about it. Okay. We are really great like that. My brothers and sisters, the question is how much we give importance to our secret victories. Nobody knows. Nobody is clapping and nobody is saying that you are really great that you have that such victories. You need that. You need that. Young people and old people, all of us, we need to have secret victories like David. Second thing is, uh, we just now heard when he was going, he was not in a position to handle the dress, military dress. It's too much for him. And what he has with that event, with a stick, with a sling, and with five stones. That's, his, that's what he had. My dear brothers and sisters, even today, as uh, you are fighting against the devil, you need to have only faith, faith in God. Whatever you have, with all little faith, you go and fight against Goliath. When you talk, thinking of the ministry, a biggest ministry God has called for you, and God is taking you to the ministry. It's like the big Goliath. Don't think of uh, your degrees, your things, and this and that. Your money, your laptop, your smartphone, and everything. With that, I'll go and do the ministry. Not needed. Not needed. God expects you to go with these little stones. Then God can give you because God made David. Everything came under him. To begin with, he went with what he has. Even in this evening, I really challenge you, brothers and sisters, whatever you have, go with that. Face uh, uh, ministry. Face the challenges in life. God will bless you. Then, 41, we could read the victory which has come to David. And that story was so powerful that uh, uh, Goliath was uh, uh, also religious. He is scolding David in his God's name. That's what it's mentioned. That means he was not an atheist. Goliath was not an athe atheist. 
he believed in god and he was also mentioning about his own god's names and cursing david but we know david when the saying i come in the name of the lord in the name of the lord and it's very clearly mentioned 45 46 i have to read it for you again very important verses uh, chapter 17 verses 45 and 46 david said to that philistine that is goliath you come against me with sword and spear and javelin but i come against you in the name of the lord almighty the god of the armies of israel whom you have defied my god has heard what you are telling you have defied him but i come in that name this day the lord will deliver you into my hands and i will strike you down and cut off your head this very day i will give you to the circuses of the philistine army of the birds and to the wild animals and the whole world will come to know there's a god in israel and the whole world will come to know there's a god in israel all the earth will know that there is a god in israel what a powerful uh, words from this young boy very much i'm thinking this is my one of my very favorite points it is not a playground it's a battlefield it's a battlefield if something will happen wrongly it's not that david is going to be killed his king is going to be killed his whole family members are going to be killed finished israel is going to suffer like anything and yesterday when india has lost their cricket match against uh, uh, england the captain was so dull that's what today it, uh, it says the news says and he was angry like he thought in chennai ground easily he can they can win the match but uh, they have lost my friend it is not a playground where somebody has lost it is a battlefield life and death if something happens gone and during that time david is talking about the whole world will know that there's a god in israel what a powerful statement it is my dear brothers and sisters as we uh, talk about david and goliath story keep that in mind in our inner being we need to have victories and we need to go forward with whatever we have and we need to go in the name of the lord and god alone can give us victory and ultimately it is not that people are going to sing as we saw in the as we are seeing in the next chapter women are going to sing david has killed 10000 saul could kill only 1000 but david could kill don't expect songs like that applauses praises it is in the name of the lord you went and you got victory keep that in mind and everybody should talk about david's god david's god that's what daniel also did in daniel 6 chapter we see that daniel's god is almighty god he is an everlasting god his kingdom cannot be uh, thrown away daniel's god here we see that david's god is really great 18th and 19th chapter we see that uh, david's uh, uh, first uh, experience after this great victory end of 17th chapter it's very unfortunate uh, to hear that saul is not aware of this boy david he was asking the uh, leader who is this boy who is going to kill uh, who is going to fight against goliath one more point i just wanted to tell you because he is the, he is very much there he helped him to come out of the evil spirit that's what we read one chapter before uh, it is very much possible you will be helping others others were helped by you but later they may not know anything about you oh this is david and son of jesse nothing they don't know anything about it only they wanted your blessings but they don't want you and that's what i understand from here then in uh, 18 chapter we see that uh, now the situation is changed everybody know a uh, new david who is and a great man 
he killed Goliath. And the popularity is just going up really great. And everybody is singing, and especially women are singing about this young boy. And uh, it was amazing. Naturally, jealousy will come. It is very natural because we, we live in a fallen world. When you are very popular in your campus, in your class, or in your church, or in your youth fellowship, or uh, in your community, remember, some people will be very jealous of you. That's what exactly happened. And Saul wanted to kill him. And even he was started plotting how to kill him. Once directly he wanted to kill him, one or two times. And later he tried various ways. And in 19th chapter, we see that four times Saul wanted to kill David. But the passage says he was very much afraid of David. Very much afraid. And he, Saul could not stand before David. Such a powerful life David had. But he wanted to get rid of David. Evil against the righteousness. The evilness, the uh, bad part of the man wanted to attack God in the other person. How true it is in our lives. God is with us. God gives us strength. But the enemy wanted to put us out, even to the level to uh, make us to make commit, su commit suicide or to die on our own. Look at uh, Saul, what he did. He said, I will give you my daughter for marriage. And David said, no, I am not such a person who can become the son-in-law of the king. That's what he said. We read in the passage. He said, and asked people to go and talk to David. And they all went and told, hey, you are a smart boy and it's better to be a son-in-law of David, as Saul. And he's asking only one, one thing, you have to kill 100 Philistines. And David was excited with such an uh, activity. To kill 100 people, he went and killed 200 people. There, we see the cunningness of the devilish attitude of Saul. He thought when he'll go and kill 100 people, Palestine will kill him. And he simply forgot this fellow killed Goliath without anything. And now he is a really great. Easily he can kill 100 people. That's what people will become blind. And they will not think of your greatness, though you are great. And David went and killed 200 people and uh, he could marry Saul's daughter. That's a different story. And, uh, and the way in which uh, uh, Saul's daughter has protected him is amazing. And now comes his brother-in-law. That is Saul's son, Jonathan, his wife's eldest brother, maybe elder brother, Jonathan. And uh, it became uh, an example of relationship of David and Jonathan. A time has come, David could not manage uh, Saul. And he was thinking, it's too much. At the same time, Jonathan was realizing the greatness of David. As we read in chapter 18, we read that Jonathan was very much uh, happy with David. He really loved him. And uh, now we see that uh, they made a covenant with one another. And there we see some of the greatness of David and also about the greatness of Jonathan. From Jonathan's point of view, he said, I'm not going to be the successor for my father Saul. You are going to be the king. He was very much aware that God has anointed David one day, David will become the king in the place of his father. Exactly we will lead. Uh, that's the way Jonathan was telling. Not only that, I may not live, but please take care of my generation. Please don't be angry with my father and uh, remove all my family members. Please be gracious to my family. 
what a prayer Jonathan made to David. And what a great man David was. He honored his commitment to Jonathan. That's what we read next week when you're going to look at the other uh, book of Samuel. We are going to look at that, David's great heart. My brothers and sisters, the situation was becoming bad to us. Saul was very angry with Jonathan also. Even he wanted to kill Jonathan also. To that level, he became devilish, devilish. And uh, in the last portion, we see that Jonathan went and communicated to David in a very dramatic way that it's a time for you to go. Earlier we see that uh, uh, Saul's daughter helped David to escape and now we see that Saul's son Jonathan could help David to live. And the passage says they were crying and David was uh, crying more, more than Jonathan. David was crying. It's not, it's not that uh, Jonathan, Jonathan was not upset. Rather, we see that both of them are very much upset. 42, chapter 20, verse 42. Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sown friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and be between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. It was a, a sorrowful depart. But David escaped from uh, Saul's presence. Tomorrow, we are going to look at uh, how uh, the bad part of Saul is coming out. Today, we looked at basically David's uh, uh, initial stages, formative stages, and uh, how God is molding him. Nowhere he could say that I can become a God, uh, become a king. And he knew pretty well that Samuel has anointed him. God's anointing is upon him. He's highly talented, but he's not at all sure when the time is going to come. That leads me to an important point comparing with Joseph. As we read in First Peter 5th chapter, till God raises you up, be under the mighty hand of God. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Even for David, how true it is. Even now, in our own life, we need to keep that in mind. Not only young people, okay? Not only young people, anybody for that matter. As God's hand is upon you, continue to be humble before him. In every aspect of uh, God's dealing in your life, be careful that you need to be humble. First question how do I handle situation when others consider me as nothing? Right from my father. That's what David could say. Even my father did not invite me for the great dinner they had at home. It's supposed to be a, one of the great event in Jesse's house. Samuel is coming and it's going to be a glorious dinner. And David is nowhere. Later, his eldest brother said, why are you here? And what happened to our uh, flock? That's the way he was talking. In 17th chapter, we read about his uh, elder brother. And even Saul was very much blessed by him and he doesn't remember him. When situations like that, how do you handle? Now you say that, no, 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 I can easily handle. But I tell you, friends, I have crossed such situations. And... Uh, very difficult, easy to take a Bible study, easy to preach. When we have such situations, it's possible that we'll feel bad and we'll have self-pity and we will say that no more uh, to involve in work. No, be like David. Secondly, David went in the name of the Lord to face Goliath. What it really means? Is it saying that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is something like that? No, not at all. It's more than that. In the name of the Lord, the authority of God's name. Thirdly, how do I enjoy such relationships like David and Jonathan? Powerful example. 
David and Jonathan. If you are David, do you have Jonathan? If you are Jonathan, are you appreciating, encouraging David? Think about it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the powerful story of David in the initial stages, how in the formative stages of David's life and in his uh, calling, how he humbled himself. And though he was so mighty and so talented, so uh, prominent, that man can humble himself under the great hand of God. Thank you for the precious lessons we learned. Continue to help us so that each one of us will take this historical event for our personal life and ministry. Continue to minister to us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.